Good morning, good morning, Dr. Gary here on the road, calling you from the Jersey Shore, having a great time, working this morning Sunday, and uh, have a good, uh, another story for you here, another uh, case presentation. We sell dental practices nationwide, we're dental practice brokers. Now, today's story is a case presentation, great opportunities for the second backup buyer of a dental practice. And we'll talk about that. As you know, we're involved in multiple states across the country. We have 10 employees, two CPA accountants, operations and marketing director. So we're here to help you. We're available now, uh, let's see, 363 days a year. We take off Christmas and Easter. The phones are answered from 8 a.m. till 9 p.m. East, East Coast time. So just call us. Buyer, seller, you want advice, you want an appraisal of the practice, whatever you need, we're here to help you. And if you're a seller and want to sell your practice, please give us a ring. We can go over with you the current market conditions and so forth. Everything you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes only. It is not legal or business advice. Now, if you are thinking about selling to a... Um, uh, dental uh, DSO uh, give us a call because we can go over everything with you we deal with them on an ongoing basis and we know who the best ones are as you know there's a lot of changes going on uh, in this marketplace and some consolidation some of the smaller players are out some of the larger players are only buying large multi multi office platforms and are not buying single offices anymore. So things are changing. Other them, uh, others have raised the ante. They want to be at two, almost 1.8 million gross with six operatories and an associate on location. So there is a lot of possibilities here. And I'll keep you posted on them. Now we work with the, we independently choose these uh, DSOs, we don't work for them. But when we do bring someone in, uh, a seller to them, they pay our commission. So there is great opportunities for you. There'll be majority of the time, no commission for you. And uh, we also, when you work with us, uh, often we can get your legal fees reimbursed upon successful closing based on certain criteria. We're one of the few brokers in the country that can do that. Uh, so what is it about this second buyer, the backup buyer? Now, when we put a deal together, we try to have a second buyer sort of in the wings. We don't tell the second buyer what the first buyer is offering. I mean, that's a private thing. We keep that. We don't shop deals. I don't want to lose my first buyer. But we'll certainly be open to a second buyer to just keep them waiting in the wings, give them all the financial information. Uh, we're not negotiating the price by them giving us another offer, but saying, look, if the first person full pulls out, um, you have the opportunity to bid on the practice, put your letter of intent in, put uh, you know some kind of good faith deposit, small, uh, under $2,000. So we'll get you in and we'll, you know, uh, you could see the practice. Uh, if the first one falls apart, you'll be in, we're gonna call you as a backup buyer. Well, the beauty of a backup buyer, assuming the first one was, you know, went pretty far and didn't close, the dental contracts are already finished. Of course, attorneys want to have their own contracts, but assuming you're going to use the same attorney because they're both, I usually set up dental attorneys. So you're going to have, let's call it a similar contract. Um, then there was probably a lease assignment done already. So you're going to have, let's call it a similar lease assignment because you may or may not agree with it, but chances are if there's a lease assignment, the uh, landlord's not going to negotiate again. So, uh, but at least that's done. And then, uh, depending how long the, far the deal went out, the bank has already approved this deal. Now, obviously it's unique for each buyer each buyer has to get approved independently, but the deal itself probably did cash flow properly and uh, you'll be able to buy it, the practice, because it's been through the bank already, underwriting department. You have to get reapproved because you're a different buyer, but at least the, the workout of the deal itself 
uh, the mechanics of the deal and everything you know about it has already been worked out. The bank has looked at the cash flow already. Um, your cash, your independent uh, uh, financial situation could be a little different, uh, but but the deal itself, the practice, has been looked at by the bank at least initially. So there's a lot uh, a lot going on here, and as I say, the contract's probably already written. And the lease assignment's probably already done. So assuming all these things are done, and then you qualify for everything, and you and your attorney, hopefully you use the same attorney, agree to the contract's already been written. You don't have to agree, but at least it's been written. The chances are the buyer's already agreed, the, buyer, the previous buyer agreed to it, the seller agreed to it. And chances are it's a pretty good contract. Assuming you'll agree to all these things, it is like easy street. You can close in a very short time period. Don't have to wait for the landlord. Landlord, of course, has to approve you, but the, you don't have to wait for the lease assignment, assuming you're gonna use the same one. I mean, it's so much easier. Contract, banking, lease assignment, the road has been paved in front of you, and there's nothing better than this. And uh, assuming that the first buyer, you know, panicked or whatever, or just got cold feet, there's nothing wrong with the deal, um, you, of course, have to scrutinize that, and your attorney has to review everything. But assuming there was nothing wrong with the deal, uh, you said a buyer got cold feet, and it does happen. Certain buyers are not ready to buy, and I can appreciate that. That's their personality. They are not ready to buy, and that's okay. You know, But you, as a second buyer, you jump in there. It is easy street for a dental office purchase. There's nothing easier than that. So much less aggravation you have to spend. Possibly less legal fees, certainly upon lease negotiation. And uh, maybe your attorney will give you a little break because of contract negotiation. You gotta use the same attorneys. You don't have to, but suggested you try it if you like the attorney, if you like the bank, and uh, you're pleased with everything. I think it's great opportunities and uh, you could do exceedingly well and there's nothing easier than this, all right? So uh, let's stay in contact, give us a call. Now we're doing these, uh, I think we're at 339 YouTube videos. I don't believe there's anybody in the, in the country that has more YouTube videos on uh, buying and selling a dental office. Uh, but we do them, we're excited about what they do them. Every deal we do, we're excited about. Because I sort of relive my life. I mean, I love making deals, but I relive my life as a younger person and as a dentist because you're getting to a deal that I would like to, you know, I would have purchased possibly. And uh, especially ones with real estate. In fact, this morning we just left one that's an entire estate over in Monmouth County, New Jersey. Wow. It's a building fully renovated from the 1800s, but completely renovated. It's a dental practice in a self-standing building on the property. There's a pool on the property. There's a uh, six operatory office. There's an uh, apartment in the back and a four car garage. I mean, it's really nice, we're out on the main road. But we, we do get excited about these deals. That's why we're never gonna retire. We just like the action. So we have all new stuff coming up. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna be alerted because we're always doing new YouTube videos, all right? Thank you, bye.